The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All Hit Radio Welcome to the X-Zone A place where fact is fiction And fiction is reality Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell And welcome to the Exxon, everyone. I am Rob McConnell, and for the next four hours, I am your host, I am your guide, as together we will cross the time-space continuum to this place that I call the Exxon. It's a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. It's a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. And the Exxon comes to you Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern, right here on the Exxon Broadcast Network, Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, and iHeartRadio. If you'd like to send me an email, exxonedexxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And to find out about the programming we have available for you 24-7, 365 on the Exxon Broadcast Network, including Kevin Randall's show, A Different Perspective, including Dr. Bernie Beitzman's show, Connecting with Coincidence, you know, and Roberta Grimes' show, that is uh, Seek Reality, Wilda Wiecka with... The Science of Magic, and many other shows, www.xzbn.net. Exonation, my guest this hour is William Lawrence, and we're going to be talking about bent light. Now, while William is a scientist investigating new methods of communicating with extraterrestrial intelligence, developing a new method of spectroscopy, he has discovered extraterrestrial messages in the visible light frequency of our star the sun. In 2015, while creating an experiment to communicate with ghosts, he discovered that not only ghosts were able to become visible, but other life forms that he uh, concluded were not from Earth. With this discovery came many unexplained sightings of UFOs, and it seemed that the UFOs were targeting due to the discovering the frequency they're using to communicate. Since 1984, most uh, SETI experiments searched for radio signals from ET. But now, with new communication technology, there are other possible frequencies extraterrestrials could be using as these new technologies uh, are evolving, and that is what William is looking to establish, communication with extraterrestrial life. His website, www.bentlights.com, that's bentlights.com. And William Lawrence, welcome to the X-Zone. Hi, thanks for having me on. Uh, tell me, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with the bent lights, uh, the extraterrestrials, ghosts, and, and this fascinating new concept called bent lights. Well, it was actually by accident, and uh, it was in 2015. I just had an idea, mm -hmm. and at the time I was doing a lot of ghost hunting and stuff like that, and um, I had this idea that I could take light and um, just process it and project it onto a piece of metal. And I just had a feeling that spirits would be able to, to use that as a platform to communicate with me. Mm. And um, I went out on the first day and I took about an hour of photographs. And when I was reviewing the photographs, to my amazement, I, I saw the first image of what I, at the time, assumed was human, mm -hmm. a human-like spirit. And uh, it was crystal clear. We're talking the, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the shoulder blades, the uh, large white head with like a forehead. Right. It was, it was kind of like white looking, but it looked like a spirit. And uh, that was the very first photograph that I ever saw. And um, from there on, I just continued the experiment. And I went weeks and weeks and weeks without getting any results. And um, 
a month or two later, the images started coming back in. And then that's whenever I re-reviewed all the evidence and I was able to find not only did I capture humans, right. I captured what looked like reptiles, advanced reptiles. So you're talking about the reptilians. Well, kind of, sort of. Um, the, the, the images of the reptiles that mm -hmm. I collected, they had these large gold reflective eyes. They got nostril holes and an upside down mouth and their skin is brown and, and they look sort of like a turtle, mm. but advanced, an advanced form of that. And um, I came to the conclusion that not only did humans advance, but in other galaxies, there, the possibility of reptiles evolving before mammals is almost certain. So tell me, William, how did you actually discover the ET messages in the visible light? That was done by, just like I said before, it was, I thought I would communicate with ghosts, mm -hmm. and then by reviewing the evidence, and this is an experiment that I set up, and I have been doing for over three years, I've been running this experiment, and uh, the images come and go, come and go, but what I found is that they're able to input data and information. So these extraterrestrials or, or advanced life forms from other galaxies, they could be here, they could be anywhere, are using um, advanced physics to communicate so they could embed their messages in photons from our sun. And what they're able to do is send us humans images um, of, of themselves mm -hmm. and also anything that they want us to see. So why don't they send us messages that we can read and better understand? That is a very good question. And the one thing, what I'm able to do when I'm doing the experiment is I ask a lot of questions in my mind. Right. And, um, and, and even then, like I put a lot of concentration into this. They answer me. But, but like you're saying, why can't they just make it easier or just put something that is more accessible or knowable? But... They, they, it's almost a mystery. Like they kind of send signs. Like on one of the images, there was a a light being mm -hmm. riding on a beam of light, and it was flying on a beam of light, and then it was looking through the rear end of a telescope, Galileo spyglass to be exact. So it was like almost like a message, like, "Hey, you see us, and we see you," but they're still like subliminal messages. They're not direct messages, but they're also sending photographs of themselves as well, which gotcha. is interesting. So basically, they're doing what the basic same thing that we are doing by sending data through light using fiber optics. It, it is sort of similar to fiber mm -hmm. optics, but this is a more advanced form, and I've put a lot of time and effort into the research of this communications. And um, in order to use the, in order for their photographs and images to appear in the photons of our sun, and that's what I use as sunlight, they must be using some form of quantum entanglement yeah. and quantum teleportation. So they're able to entangle the information. Mm -hmm wirelessly so without fiber optics runs through wires so but tell me what happens at night when there's no light i have tested the moon light and i uh, captured some very strange images in the actual moonlight when i was processing the light and i also picked up audio and uh, the audio was strange growls like lions roaring mm -hmm. It was very, very strange. But are there photons in moonlight? Yes. So the sun is emitting photons, and those photons are bouncing off the moon, and then they're reflecting off the moon and on down to Earth. And what I found with my study is I use metal for the sunlight. So I got to reflect the, the light through the water, process it with the water, and then project it onto steel, and I take a photograph of the light on the steel but with the moon you mm. don't need to use the steel so it's almost as if the light is being processed by the moon because it's some type of metal and then it's reflecting off so the moon the light is already processed but doesn't the water distort the reflect the, the refraction and the reflection it's actually the refraction is where these 
beings are actually forming. So the water is like a lens. It's it basically like a lens. So it's slowing the light down mm -hmm. and then it's focusing the light and creating a focal point and the right. refraction when you see the rainbow colors and stuff like mm -hmm. that you get all the different colors of the spectrum yeah. the refraction is what they're able to manipulate along with the photons and they're able to then use that refraction to create their cells like holographic photographs of themselves why are they doing this? That's a good question. I do believe that we need to communicate with extraterrestrial life, but like you said earlier, why can't they just use radio and contact us? And I'm not exactly sure on that, but I do know that the frequency that they're relaying their information on mm -hmm. could be protected by the government, I'm almost certain, through the uh, Free Space Optical Program. So the government is already using these visible light frequencies to transfer mm -hmm. data and information wirelessly. Yeah. They have but, been but, for several years. And But the FCC will not allow that for public use. It's only for militaries and governments. So the technology is there. All right, stand by, William. You and I have to take our first break. William Lawrence is our guest. We're talking about bent light this hour here in the Exxon. For more information, visit www.bentlights.com. Dot com and on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash bent light. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Gwilda Wiaka's latest book, The Science of Magic, Book of Mysteries, Volume 1, is the first book in a series based on her writings that open every episode of The Science of Magic radio show. Drawing on the subject matter of each guest, and armed with over 40 years' experience in shamanism, 35 years in alternative health, and degrees in psychology and religious studies, Gwilda introduces relevant and leading-edge information that supports spiritual evolution and personal empowerment. Rich with wisdom and inspirational quotes packaged in digestible segments, this is a book that will pull you from cover to cover. It will also serve as a daily inspirational reading for years to come. The Science of Magic Book of Mysteries, Volume 1, is available at our website, tsompublications.com, amazon.com, and wherever fine books are sold. Back in Victorian England, a famous theologian posed a perplexing riddle. Why are the two top personalities in the Bible tagged with the numbers 7 and 11? Academics agree the answer is found in the stunning discovery of a hitherto secret Bible structure explained in a new book called The Genesis Grid. The discovery is so simple that preschool children could illustrate it. Certain claims are hugely controversial and may offend some, but at the X-Zone, we've studied this awesome new book and agree with one expert, and I quote, These discoveries appear to be beyond coincidence. So who or what hid this wonderful pattern in the Bible, and what might they do next? Find out more, X-Zone Nation, and read reviews on www.genesisgrid.co.uk. That's www.genesisgrid.co.uk.
William Lawrence is our special guest this hour. Explanation: We're talking about Bent Light. For more information, visit bentlights.com. What was it that got you started into the investigation of the paranormal as a, as a ghost researcher, William? When I was younger, you know, I had a lot of experiences mm-hmm. with uh, unexplained things happening, um, like things moving. And uh, in my house where I grew up at, the, the whole entire house would just flash white. Wow. The whole house would light up white. And, uh, you know, I've always been fascinated by by spirits and stuff. And when I turned 18, mm-hmm. I had – it must have been a haunting in a house that I was staying in. And it kept – every week it would hold me to the bed and it wouldn't let me move. Once a week it would do that. And then on like the third or fourth week – it actually showed itself to me, and it was this large, brown, human-like being, very skinny and uh, very bony, and he had his mouth wide open, and he was screaming at the top of his lungs, but you couldn't hear anything, and he wanted me out, and I did just that. I left that house, and I never went back. So how, so what did you? what were you able to find – as a researcher, when it comes to investigating ghosts and, and other phenomena of that sort? Well, I paint houses, and I was working in a house, and I would set up my camera okay. on occasion. And I've captured some good footage of actual spirits and stuff. So I've always been fascinated by – I always felt close. I can always feel the energy. So I'm always able to capture these photographs of ghosts and then – out of nowhere, I just had an idea to develop an experiment, and it, and it worked, to my surprise. Okay, uh, apparently soon after the discovery of the frequent visitations of UFOs, uh, you were having UFO experiences? Yeah, as soon as I discovered the messages in light, and I was able to see them, and, and they were able to see me as well, so they acknowledged being seen, I started getting visited one of the the biggest visitations was this large orange sphere and uh it was transparent and it had black smoke swirling inside and it was just getting dark and it started coming from the south moving north straight directly towards me and it stopped right behind my house so i'm outside looking at it i right. call for a witness to look at it i point at it and i go to walk towards it and then it just slowly starts moving east but for for a year to come after starting the discovery of extraterrestrial messages and light, they would visit me almost on a night, nightly basis. They appear like stars in the sky, and sometimes they would come down real low. They would stop, and then they would shoot right back up towards space. For me, I thought it was a sign to, for them to say, hey, you know, we know that you can communicate with us. Now keep doing it. Like they kept keeping me involved. I would go outside and look up at night and say, why am I doing this? Why am I continuing the bent light? And uh, they would always answer me by appearing. So they kept me interested. And now I don't think I need them anymore. Okay. Now you were saying that you received messages. Uh, and, And I asked you before, why don't they just send messages? And you said they send pictures. So are the messages that you're referring to as these pictures that are transmitted to you? Correct. You know, and photography is very important when it comes to science. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a photograph you can communicate with. And Seth Shostak from SETI Institute has even speculated that if an advanced civilization in our universe was wanting to communicate with Earth, Mm -hmm. they would they would make it easy. They would try to make their message as easy as possible to receive. And the first thing they would do is send you pictures well you know, yeah we can relate to pictures well certainly and this sounds like very much a lot of the the content of the movie uh contact with jody foster that was actually you know uh the arecibo dish in puerto rico where seth shostak has done a lot of work was part of that so i can understand his logic there um you you say that an unknown language appears on your radio display at three 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 p.m that was in the first year of discovery. I was uh, working at a house, and the woman's house where mm-hmm. I was working at, her son was born at 3.33 p.m., Right, and that 
supposedly he said that there was an angel or ghost always with him. But uh, that's on another note. But yes, yeah, so I got off work. I got into my car. The radio started flashing. I started videotaping. And when I slowed down the videotape, first it first it displayed my initials W H L and then uh, 1999, and then it displayed an unknown language. And uh, the first the first letter of the language it looked like a letter. It was um in the form of a of a of a tree like a tree leaf, mm-hmm. and then there was three numericals, three numerical looking. And then on the very last letter, there was a, it looked like a horse. So it was almost like hieroglyphics that was appearing. It, it was definitely strange. The closest thing, language I found to the, the language that appeared on my radio was uh, the Emerald Tablet by Thoth. Has this language or this, these type of messages uh, continued, or was that the only and first and only time? With the unknown radio Yes. On the radio display, yeah. that was a one-time thing. It happened one time. Mm-hmm. And uh, at that time, I was getting visited on a weekly basis. So I was kind of used to the stuff. That's why I had my video camera there, and I started videotaping. And it was pretty crazy because the song, Space Song, mm-hmm. was playing. And um, it was just a very insane moment that I was able to capture. But there's so many unexplained things that just happen Right. Within the first year of discovery. Now, the, these these visitations that you would get weekly, who were they with? That would be, you know, the unexplained lights and the UFOs. There was um, many of them. It was almost like they mm-hmm. were always following me everywhere right. I went. I was my I was dropping off my drummer one time after a show at night, and on our way home, one of the lights came right over the top of the car. And went right into the ground in front of us. And I'm sober. I don't do anything like drugs or anything. And um, my drummer looked at me and said, what was that? Like, he was in shock. Like, it was pretty wild. Um, Have other people besides the drummer been with you when these visitations happen? Yes. um, You know, a lot of my family, I'm always with them. So... Mm -hmm. He was with me on that occasion. My wife was with me with the uh, large sphere. And, um, you know, there's always people around whenever I'm outside and I feel the presence I'm, or I'm able to see these things in the air. I'm able to point them out and other people are able to see them. There was one daytime incident. I was with um, a younger kid and uh, it was pretty wild. It was two objects but they were like bouncing in front of each other and then moving behind each other real fast and they kept switching and uh they moved right over the top of us so that was pretty strange indeed why do you think you were selected to receive these messages that's a good question you know i don't believe i was selected i don't feel like i'm anything special you know i i just had an idea and i took some tools and I created an experiment and I was able to achieve results. And, um, I, I just believe it's science, you know, it was eventually going to get discovered if it hasn't already been discovered and kept hidden. But, uh, I try to avoid conspiracy theories, you know, and I stick to the facts. I follow the evidence and my evidence and my scientific evidence of this discovery has brought me to one conclusion that Mm -hmm. I detected these extraterrestrial messages in the visible light spectrum of our sun. So where did you get your scientific training? I'm self-taught. I'm a painter by trade. I Mm -hmm. do construction and play music. Right. So as far as science, you know, before I wasn't into the extraterrestrials, I wasn't really into science per se like i was into music and ghosts but once this experiment happened and i got my results Mm -hmm. i reached out to try to find answers and all the people and scientists that i contacted could not give me these answers so instead i had to turn to 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 find my own answers and by researching all these quantum communication technologies that are being kept hidden in finding patents in 1981 by the U.S. Navy to use sunlight, I have discovered 
so much information about visible light communication technology is ridiculous, but it's not in the public's eye. So not many people know what I'm talking about when it comes to that. But all of my science background came from my experiment. And from the experiment, I branched off finding anything that is connected to the experiment. So I'm like bringing it in like a magnet so I can understand what I discovered and what the potentials are. What have members of the scientific community said about your photographs? Well, I have spoke with Seth Sostak over the phone and uh, via email. He asked for the email. I sent him the email, the information. He dismissed the claims over email and uh, basically stating that it's nothing more than taking a photograph of the reflection of a bumper of a car Mm -hmm. and uh, leaving it more for like pareidolia, which is when people see faces and objects. And um, another scientist, Mark D'Antonio, who is an astronomer. Yeah. He uh, basically, me and him went back and forth for almost a year, and uh, his conclusion was that it was either pareidolia or optical caustics, which in order for optical caustics, in order the algorithms involved to, to make a coherent image using optical caustics is you got to use a computer to generate it. So there's just, it's not naturally forming in the light. So then optical caustics is not an explanation that works. And then pareidolia. Pareidolia is when people form images of faces and objects in, yeah. in the moon and Mars and stuff like that. But most of those examples are like miles long. All right, but stand in- by. We've got to take our break at the bottom of the hour for the news. Exonation. William Lawrence is our guest. We're talking about bent light this hour. And if you'd like to get more information, see some of the photographs that uh, we're talking about this hour, visit his website at bentlights. Com. I'll be back on the other side of this news break. Don't go away. From our broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond, you're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. ABS Media Day. The scientist and the mystic have been on an age-old, relentless search with one thing in common. They seek truth. Their paths converge in the 40,000-year-old practice of shamanism, an ancient science delving to the quantum level of life, facilitating healing, manifestation, and evolution. I'm Gwilda Wiecka, the founder and director of Path Home Shamanic Arts School, a unique Colorado State-certified occupational school, training shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also provide classes for empowering personal lives through shamanism. Our certification classes are in week-long segments, enabling international participation, and online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions are available. Come discover the science of magic in the limitless world of shamanism. www.findyourpathhome.com Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnick's, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, 
a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Exonation. Uh, William Lawrence is our guest this hour. We're talking about his discovery called Bent Lights. His website is bentlights.com. William, uh, how do you set up your experiments? Uh, how do you how do you record them? How do you how do you perform the experiments that that you call scientific investigating? Right. It's very simple, actually, and the instructions are on my Bent Light. Facebook mm-hmm. page, and, and basically all it is, is is a metal surface, black, usually steel, carbon steel is what I use, a black metal surface. So I use that surface as a screen mm-hmm. to project the light to. So now I only use sunlight because I believe everything is connected through the sun, so they're able to entangle the information in sun. So I'm basically hacking into the sun. So what you do is you take a small bottle of water with about an inch of water in it, and you hold it at a 45-degree angle, about five to six inches off of the black metal surface, and you project the light through the water, out the bottle, and onto the metal. Once the light is on the metal, you then take digital photographs of only the light Mm -hmm. on the metal, and you take photographs for about an hour then you have to review the photographs and majority of the time nothing ever appears it's only very random it's only very in, once in a great while that would anything actually appears but when they do appear some of them appear in absolute detail but they only appear after the photograph is taken so while you're doing the photographs you can't see anything but light blurbs so it sounds a lot like evps you can't hear your the voice until after the recording has been replayed. Correct. And you know, I believe too that this has something to do with the digital because it only works with digital photography. So I believe whatever is entangling this information or showing themselves, mm-hmm. they're they're leaving a digital footprint. Okay, but why do you think that the the image cannot be seen? Like digital photography is a whole, whole new ballpark compared to the old photography using film. Digital photography depends on the instantaneous taking of of a photograph. So how does that work? How do, how come it doesn't show up right away? It must have something to do with the processors. Whenever the the when it's processing the image, because it's doing it all digitally. Like the same with the EVPs, when you're using a digital recorder, you may not hear the auto, but somehow it's able to pick up on the digital. Well, I've got I've got a Canon camera, a pro camera, and I can set the shutter speed uh, to a you know to a number of various settings. What would happen if you set the shutter speed faster? Well, depending. I mean, regardless, once you take a photograph. Mm-hmm. It's, it's still going to process and appear. So you're really never taking the actual photograph. But the photograph, the, the appearance of the photograph on the LED screen is instantaneous. Correct. So why Unless you're it? using film. So do you use film or do you use digital? Only digital photography. Okay. And what kind of camera? Does it depend on what kind of camera you use? Actually, it does. It's best to use 720p. I have high high definition 1080p cameras, right. and I ran those tests alongside my 720p. And the only time that these entities are able to appear is through the 720p. I use a Logitech uh, 720p webcam. So you use a webcam. Correct. Okay. Why do you think that 720 is the magic number and not a higher definition? 
I'm not exactly sure because uh, when it comes down to the mathematical and all the technology part of it, you know, I made the discovery. I'm able to discover what I discovered, but I'm actually trying to reach out to scientists so they can actually look into this and study it themselves so yeah. we can understand these questions. So, you know, after talking to Seth Shostak, who I know, and uh, Mark Antonio, who I know, how do, you, how do you feel about them, what they're saying about your discovery? Well, you know, Seth Shostak uh, dismissed my claims, yeah. and SETI Institute actually banned me in 2015. But in June of 2016, mm -hmm. they just came out with uh, their laser SETI program, which is actually using a device that it has a transmission-graded prism on top, right? Mm -hmm. and, it, and it bends the light, yeah. and then it goes into a digital camera. So they're already using the exact method yeah. that I'm using to analyze this light. So they're dismiss dismissing my claims, but now they're using my methods, well, which the, is very strange. The CIA was also using light emitting messaging, and you know, going back to the '60s and '70s. Yeah, I, I found Pat yeah. in 1981 from the CIA. Right, and a lot of that work was done at Area 51. Yeah, you know, with with uh, the scientists like Mark D'Antonio, which mm -hmm. I respect a lot, and, and Seth Shostak, you know, I respect their fields. But the problem is, you know, they're not open to understanding what I discovered. But then instead of helping me, they're going and doing the exact same thing with the Laser SETI project, which Elliot Gollum, Gillum is uh, running. Uh, it, it is kind of frustrating and aggravating that they can go and use my method but not look into what I'm doing. I have to ask you, why would uh, why would you be banned from SETI? Like, don't they want the participation of the public? What happened was I posted my research there, and, and I just posted a quick thing saying, hey, you know, could you look into this? I discovered this and that. Tell me what you think. Mm -hmm. um, it got a bunch of likes and comments, and then it was removed, and I was banned. You're banned from posting? I'm banned from commenting. It, Oh, okay. SETI Institute banned me, and also Medi International um, Messaging Extraterrestrial Intelligence. I'm also banned from there, but I never really did anything hmm. on that page. But uh, I don't know why they're banning me. I think they're just trying to keep my research not known, and they're trying to do the exact same thing. When you send your, your research to other scientists uh, besides Seth and Mark, uh, what is some of the feedback that you get? I'm sure you, that you, that uh, that you're out there. You're trying to get the answers that you can't you can't find anywhere else. You're you're you know you're going to the people that you think can help you. And what happens? I'm working with a quantum physicist who retired. He's helping me try to get a patent. So mm -hmm. we're drawing everything out right now. So I, I have one guy helping me out because he understands where I'm coming from. But most I could honestly tell you every single scientist i contacted thought i was crazy and told me that i'm wasting my time so i just continue because i know what is in i'm i know what i discovered and i'm not going to stop until i find an answer regardless of what anyone says you can't look at my photographs and evidence and tell me that it's nothing because i know that it is something and that something is what we need to understand so we can establish contact with these other civilizations Why do you think that there is a connection between ghosts, between other aspects of the paranormal and the extraterrestrials in this relationship? Just our soul alone is extraterrestrial. And um, just the fact that to know, to know that we have a soul and know that soul moves on and moves on to another world, it becomes extraterrestrial. And I'm 100% certain that the UFOs, the extraterrestrial activity is mm -hmm. is. 100% is connected to the um, religion and, and the paranormal activity. So everything is connected. And then not only have I been able to discover these messages, but now I'm connecting religion with science. So now that you're seeing these spirits and souls, we know there's something out there. And that, that is what we need to understand. You say that there's 100%, you're, you're sure 100%. What is that based on? What kind of evidence? Or is this Correct. just your own personal belief? It, definitely not a belief. You know, everything is worked up from this scientific method. You know, you have an experiment. You do the experiment. You collect your evidence. Mm -hmm. From the evidence, I have came to these conclusions that the, the 
paranormal realm is connected to the extraterrestrial realm and that they're communicating using these visible light frequencies. So now if we are able to to connect with this other realm, we may be communicating with ourselves after Earth. All right, let me let me just do a bit of backtracking here. You have no scientific training. Correct. You had do you have any college, any university training? I do not. Okay. How do you know that the process, the procedures that you are taking may not be or may be tainting what you believe to be evidence. Oh, I understand where you're coming from, but you don't. In order to be a scientist, Mm -hmm. a scientist is defined as someone who is using the scientific method to achieve results. Now, this is a new discovery. This has never been discovered before, and possibly the technology used to send the information this way hasn't even been invented. So it would be impossible to come from a scientific background to make this discovery if you know everything you need to know about science. You wouldn't even think it's possible. So you wouldn't even attempt to try something different or new. You know, discoveries aren't made in classrooms. Discoveries are made in the field. You know, the the first x-ray was discovered in, I believe it was 1885. And he did that in his house just experimenting with these light rays and use his wife to take the very first photograph of the human hand. All right, stand yeah. by. We've got to take our final break. Exxon Nation, William Lawrence is our guest. Uh, he's. We're talking about bent light this hour. Now, if you're a skeptic or a believer, send me an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com. And for more information on bent lights and on William Lawrence, visit www.bentlights.com. We'll be back after this break as we wrap up this hour here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Named one of the world's greatest psychics, Elizabeth Joyce is now giving readings worldwide via Skype. Elizabeth Joyce is recognized for her clairvoyant ability to help find missing persons, her analysis of dreams, past life regression work, mediumship, and her accurate predictions. Elizabeth has been a frequent guest on the Exxon Radio Show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, now for several years. For an appointment with Elizabeth Joyce, call 201-934-8986 or Skype at elizabeth.joyce. And for more information, you can always visit Elizabeth Joyce online at www.new-visions.com. The new nonfiction book, Razor of Madness, is similar to cult movies like Clockwork Orange, Dragon's Tattoo, or The Other Side of Hell. Wayne Morin Jr. and Thomas Lee Howe will expose widespread and systematic deficiencies in this thought-provoking tell-all novel. Mind control rages among scholars in law schools. Human rights are ignored while thought reform and mental manipulation are accepted practices used as behavior modification. Dr. Louis Jolion West comes to mind. Media and public scrutiny shows that United States mental hospitals are in fact destructive murder industries. Razor of Madness Expose Novel details this epidemic through an in-depth professional and personal investigation. For decades, there has been a revolving door policy that still releases killers and pedophiles back into society. The maestro of mind control continues to haunt America to this very day. Razor of Madness is available in paperback or as a downloadable ebook at Amazon.com. I'm William S. Peckham. If you enjoy a good mystery with a touch of the paranormal, then you'll love my novel, From Out of the Woodwork. It's the story of a young Toronto contractor, Sean Kennedy, who buys derelict homes, guts them, and turns them into multifamily dwellings, slums just waiting to happen. When Sean buys 29 Livery Lane, the house fights back. Former owners unexpectedly come out of the woodwork as he starts the destruction. The apparitions come to him when he touches old books, 
reads hidden letters, rummages through old boxes, finds a locket or reads a discovered manuscript of a murder mystery. From out of the woodwork, we'll take you from 1899 to the horror of the World Trade Center, September 11, 2001. Check out From Out of the Woodwork on my website, www.williamspeckham.com. Exxon Nation, if you would like to watch the debate that we had here on the Exxon Broadcast Network between Kevin Randall and um, Stephen Bassett on the MJ-12 papers, they're available on YouTube uh, by going to the Exxon Radio TV channel. It's that simple. Our guest this hour is William Lawrence, and we're talking about Bent Light. His website is bentlights.com, and on Facebook... Facebook.com forward slash bent light. What is the connection to dark matter and neutrinos? Well, the connection between dark matter and neutrinos is that dark matter and neutrinos are ghost like particles. So scientists know they exist, but they can't see them because they're invisible. But they can still see their interaction, that they're interacting with the matter around them, but they can't actually photograph them. So, you know, they have they have ice cube up north. There's there's a lot of different neutrino facilities that are trying to detect this ghost like particle. But the problem is they can't see it. But that's where the connection comes with this experiment. There is a good possibility that the the evidence that I have gathered of these extraterrestrials and these human like entities forming in the light could be using some form of of neutrino communication coupled with dark matter therefore it's only showing up on the digital camera and when you take a photograph of ghosts you don't see the ghost with your eyes but when you take a digital photograph the ghost appears on the digital photograph therefore in order to detect these neutrinos it could have something to do with digital photography that doesn't make sense how's that oh just say it again because if it's if it's there it's photographed but it's there, you can't see it, but it comes up in the photograph. Is that, what, is that what it means? Yeah, it's invisible. Just like, um, for okay. example, I photographed a, a, a ghost in a room that I was working in in Levittown, New York. And as soon as I set the camera down, the ghost passed right by me. It was six foot long and about two to three foot tall. And it was up in the air flying through. Now, you can see it on the digital camera, but I was right there. I didn't see anything at all. So it appears on the digital photography. Does it appear, uh, do these uh, messages appear on uh, using different light spectrum cameras? That I have not tried. The only thing that I've used is the uh, 720p webcam. Yeah. And then I also have a high definition cameras that I also run with the experiment simultaneously right. to see if I get different reactions. But I haven't tried any other type of spectrum cameras. That'd be interesting. The, the experiment is very time consuming. So it, it literally takes hours during the days and then you have to run it for a year just to get a little bit of results. Once again, that doesn't make sense because if they're trying to communicate, why would they use a technique or a methodology that takes so long? There's a good possibility that what I discovered, the technology isn't 100%. Also, if they're sending the – if the signal they're only able to send at certain times, like Tesla discovered these – unknown frequencies mm -hmm. and he discovered sometimes they are open for months sometimes they're open for weeks and other times they would be open for hours so there could be another force at work that's unseen i, I couldn't answer why okay i why they only appear once a month or once every four months all right i can okay so putting the the ets aside that use the sun and light aside how do we explain the photographs of ghosts? So what you're saying, when you take a photograph and a ghost appears? Well, yeah, when you take a photograph and the ghost appears. How do we account for that? Because we're not using the same, the same light spectrum 
that is being emanated from the sun. If you're Correct. in if you're in a room painting and you've got your video camera running and this six foot long ghost passes you that you don't notice uh, when you, when it does happen, but after you review the video footage, you see it. How do we how do we explain that? Well, I I I honestly don't think there's one scientist on this planet that can explain that, and mm-hmm. that and that's where I come in. You know, I might not have went to school for science, but we are getting closer, and my discovery could be a way of us explaining that. You know, there's energy around us; we yes. just can't see it, and now we may have an the ability to talk to them we may have the ability to communicate with the spirits not only around us but in other realms as well so we may be able to just ask them the question and get the answer because i don't believe scientists are going to figure it out soon so you're talking about multiverses multi-dimensions multi-realms um or other galaxies i mean we could exist in another galaxy and just be experiencing life here just like an avatar, for example, your soul is is able to transfer from one universe to another universe. So you can experience life here. But then when you die, your soul goes back to where you're physical somewhere else. So the soul could transfer your consciousness. I'm just trying to think of that. I've seen the movie Avatar and I don't understand where that, where that was in the movie. Um, with the avatar, they were able to, to lay down on the bed and then they plugged into a machine and they were able to be conscious somewhere else. It's just like a video game. Okay. All right. Now, now, now I know what you're talking about. So where do, where do you see this, this experimenting going in the next couple of months? Well, the research is back online. It was offline for one year. Mm-hmm. So all my results and experiments, all the, the evidence that I collected was from 2015, April of 2015, to December of 2016. Then the experiment was offline for one year. But now the experiment is online. So I'm already running experiments. Once the evidence comes in, the evidence will be posted when it's collected. But the good thing that I have working for me now is that scientists at SETI Institute are actually looking into this exact same frequency and technology. So there's a good possibility that they may even confirm contact with another civilization using the same method. What happens if they don't? I'm almost certain that they will. But hypothetically, what happens if they don't? Well, it's inevitable. You know, the Department of Defense just came out with them. the UFO program. So it's not like we don't know that we're being visited. We know that they're here. We know that they're visiting us. So now we must focus on establishing communication with them. So why do you think the government has a conspiracy or a cover-up when it comes to UFOs? Technology. They, they, they want to use the technology to protect us because if the technology falls into the wrong hands, we would be vulnerable. So it's best whoever has the technology. Whoever has the the highest technology Mm -hmm. is the safest. But wouldn't it be naive to think that the United States of America is the only country that that is being visited? We know for a fact that other countries around the world are. So why the cover-up? The entire world is probably having a a race to to develop this technology but the problem is it's very elusive but uh i honestly couldn't tell you why the cover up but i mean it's not so much covered up these days it's it's in the open why do you think they just don't land and get the suspense over with once and for all that's a good question. And, you know, and a lot of people ask me, too, why don't they just send you this or send you that? Yeah. You know, I can't put myself in their shoes. I can't speak on behalf of these beings. I just know they're highly intelligent and they're trying to communicate. But as far as why they won't land, I honestly have no clue. I, I could only speculate, but I, I'm 100 percent certain they exist. I know that. How do you, in contact how, with them? How do you know that uh, you, 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 the contact that you've you've had with them? What makes you so sure that they're from out there and not from within here? On Earth, yeah. I'm one hundred percent positive they're not of Earth. How? There's no way possible that if they. Well, I've never seen some of the beings that are in the entities, and also I've never seen a spirit in the flesh except for that once Mm -hmm. 
when I was younger, but they can't possibly be here because they're not physical. What happens if they're from our future? I know. You got some interesting questions, Rob. There's, there's honestly, I'll, I'll tell you this. I mean, if I could only speculate, but yeah. I believe it may be ourselves. We're, we're looking at ourselves existing while we're existing here. Like so a, we're existing in two places at one time. Either that or like a Disney uh, ride where you can actually take a ride and go back go back to the future kind of thing, you know, for whatever amount of money that Disney is going to be charging in the future. If it's anything like today, we won't be able to afford it. Lawrence, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. I wish you continued success. And Exo Nation, if you'd like more information about Lawrence, his website is www. I'm sorry, William Lawrence. His website is www.bentlights.com. That's bentlights.com. And his Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash bentlight. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as we continue here in the X Zone. Um, just before we go, uh, two, two renowned scientists have said there's nothing to it. The young gentleman doesn't have any scientific training. He's self-taught. Does this, does this show that his efforts are in vain? I don't think so. I think he's got a lot going for him, including his, um, his, his, his persistence. However, I think that a course in science, the gathering of evidence, and some basic science courses would be to his advantage in this case. We'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I'm Rob McConnell. Don't go away. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Are you or is someone you know struggling with addictions, depression, anxiety, relationships, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, grief, success, and prosperity? Do you know that your subconscious belief plays a big role in the outcome of your hard work? We can help you permanently change the beliefs that may be the reason for your struggles and failures. We care about getting you the return on your investment and the results you are looking for. We can help you be free of the limitations of your past and in realizing your highest potential. We work with people by phone and Skype. For more information, visit us at www.ritasoman.com. That's www.ritasoman.com. Do you think you have energy problems in your home? Do you feel better when you're away than when you're home? Joey Korn is a global leader in the world of dowsing who specializes in personal energy clearing and space clearing. 
He can help you create an ideal energy environment in your home no matter where you live in the world. Learn about his remote spiritual house cleaning services and much more at www.dowsers.com. You can get Joey's book, Dowsing, A Path to Enlightenment, as well as other dowsing books and tools, Kabbalah books, and Walter Russell books. Joey's work is really amazing. Go to dowsers.com right now. That's D-O-W-S-E-R-S dot com or call 1-877-DOWSING. That's 1-877-369-7464.